So this is our painting video on how to paint our chain captain or our smash lord or our smash captain or our chain lord uh, for chaos. Effectively what you have is a strength 4 character that can do up to 7 attacks uh, running at strength 6 with toughness 5 hitting on 2's rerolling 1's and then wounding because it's strength 6 uh, wounding rhinos and, and knights um, on fives, but it's actually plus two to wound, so wounding on threes, and doing two mortal wounds a shot every for every roll that's over four. This is a monster in combat, monster up close in melee combat. It moves 14 inches, and with the sorcerer that we've got next to it, we can get warp time in, so we can move 28 inches in one turn to get him where he needs to be for his seven giant attacks. Uh, and that's not counting Death to the False Emperor. So, if you want to know how to paint up one of these to match these that you're seeing in front of you, stay tuned and we will show you exactly how we painted them uh, to look like with the way they do there. So, stay tuned. So today we're going to be painting our Chaos uh, Chain Captain, Chain Lord, as well as our Chaos Sorcerer. So we built most of these the other day, and there's a uh, building and review video uh, online um, on the channel earlier, So, and you can find it. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. So, But effectively, our Chain Lord is going to be a um, Toughness 5 um, character on a bike with a 14-inch move who can summon up to seven attacks at strength six. He hits on two up, rerolling ones, and then when it comes to wounding, strength six will hit anything toughness six on fours, uh, will hit rhinos and knights on fives, and then he's plus two to wound, so really he's hitting on threes and twos, uh, and he does two mortal wounds for every roll of four and up. So he... Uh, Seven attacks with two extra mortal wounds each is uh, 14 mortal wounds straight out and then plus the normal damage, two damage each hit with his relic chain sword. And then if he's corn, he can do it twice. So he's a pretty beefy little um, lord for just over 100 points. And we've built him now and we want to paint him. So the first thing we've done with him is we have primed him with... Chaos Black Spray, and as you can see, the detail is pretty visible from where we had to kit bash them together, as well as the Sorcerer Lord. So now we're ready to start the painting. So the first thing we're going to do with our Chain Lord is we're going to take a little bit of Retributor Armor, and we're going to start going through the trim. So we're going to do the front trim on the bike here. And we're not super worried if we make a mess because we are going to come back over the black in a little bit. And it's a very watered down layer. So you may need two coats, same as usual, to get the coverage you want, although it is a base paint. So we'll continue with these and we'll meet back here. So we're finished with our Retributor armor. And as you can see, we did the front trim of the bike as well as the skull. Then we did the shoulder pad trims and the uh, knee trims. And then we did the trims on the back of the bike, including the front and back surfaces. We did just a little bit of trim in the back back here. And then we did the other shoulder pad. We did the little uh, Black Legion logo on the bike. And then for the Champion, we also did just the top of the helmet as well as the little arrow stripe that's there. And then on the chest, there's a little chaos eight-sided star. So we did that for our uh, chain lord. For the sorcerer, pretty much the same. Front of the bike, back of the bike, and then the uh, Black Legion symbol. With both uh, legs and then both shoulder pads. And then uh, the only difference here is, of course, he has a staff. So we did the staff as well. <clears throat> so for our next color, what we're going to do is take a little bit of lead belcher. 
I'm going to start going over all of the metal work, including the front guns, as well as the pipes and the exhaust port and a few other scattering things around. So we'll do those now, meet back here, and I'll show you what we got done. <clears throat> so this is what it looks like at the end of our lead belcher la uh, layer. So as you can see, what we did was the respirator, the two guns on the front, as well as the handlebars. I did both chain swords completely. We'll add some trim to that later. The front forks, the wheel wheels of both bikes, as well as pretty much the entire exhaust system that wasn't done with the uh, Retributor armor. On the backpack we have the uh, three vents here, as well as any wiring that was there. And then we also did the front baseboard here. Um, highway bar, tappling bar, footrest, whatever you want to call it. Um, both the top and the bottom where all the spikes are. And then the engine in both, and then the, the little nub that's there as well. And then we did the trim on the uh, bike as well with uh, Lead Belcher. So... That's the end of our silver layer. The next layer we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of Rackarth flesh. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to do the helmet horns as well as the skulls on the helmet. As well as the um, satellite cloth here, the, the seat cover. Uh, because nothing's more comfortable on your armored body than a nice plush seat cover but we're going to do those three parts as well as the seat cover on the sorcerer and then we'll meet back here right after that so now that we've added our rack our flesh we've done it to the skulls and the horns and the saddlebag um, seat cover as well as the skull shoulder pad that we have here so on the sorcerer we just put it on the saddlebag that was the only bone colored thing that we had so that's the end of our rack of flesh so for our next step what we're going to do is take a little bit of dryad bark and we're going to go over all of the wood as well as the loose handlebar that's here so whichever handlebar is not held on by hand we're going to put that brown as well as the sorcerer's staff uh, right here so we'll do those little pieces and we'll meet back here. So with all of our base layers finished, what we're going to do now is start our shades. So we're going to take some Agrax Earth Shade. And with that, we're going to go over all of the bone and all of the gold color. So all of the Rackard Flesh, as well as all of the Retributor Armor. And all of that's going to get shaded with Agrax Earth Shade. Then we're going to take some Newell and Oil. And for that, we're going to shade over all of the lead belcher. So we'll do both those shades. Just like so. And you want to make sure like every other time you fill in both eyes of the skulls. Because that shade is going to go a long way to bringing out some of those details. Like so. So we'll keep going with these two shades and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. So our two shade layers are finished and they're nice and dry. And as you can see, they've really made the detail stand out. So what we're gonna do is start lighting that back up. So we're gonna start with the gold trim again. We're gonna start with a little bit of Liberator Gold. And with a detail brush, we're just going to start lighting up all those places there, all those places which we did earlier, just improving that shade and making it a little bit brighter. Once again, don't worry if you go out because we still haven't done the black trim yet. So we'll do the rest of these and we'll be back here in a little bit. So as you can see, the Liberator Gold really um, brightened up the um, 
the gold color. So what we're going to do is do the exact same thing for the silver. So we're going to take a little bit of iron breaker. And we're just going to dry brush that. Right over the shaded lead belt here. Try not to fill in the gaps. But definitely lighting it up. As you can see between those two guns, definitely a different color. So we're going to do that for the rest of the metal. And then we'll meet back here again. So now as you can see, the iron breaker has completely lit up the metal. And we still have the red liberator gold that has lit up the gold. So now we're going to light up the bone. So we're going to do that with a dry brush layer of Screaming Skull. So we'll fill in the rest of the skull, the horns, the um, skull shoulder blade, and we will meet back here. We're not going to do the uh, seat covers yet because we're going to do those a little bit later. So this is what it looks like after we're finished with the screaming skull. And as you can see, we did the pauldron as well as the skulls on the top of the head and the horns. Now we're going to come back and do the um, seat cover. So instead of Screaming Skull, we're going to use a Ushabti Bone, which is the same color, just a little bit more beige or brownish. So we're going to use a little bit of that and just dry brush that right over that seat cover. Once again, not minding if we go over the black, but try to avoid the metals and other colors that we're finished with. something like that. So what we're going to do is the other one and we'll meet back here again. So now, now that we're finished with our Ushapti bone, which looks slightly darker than the skulls, what we're going to do now is start dealing with the black trim and, and the black armor itself. And we're going to clean up all these spots here that we overshot. So we're going to get our Abaddon black. It's time to start cleaning up the armor. With a nice dark black color. So we're going to start this and we'll meet back here when this is all done. So this is our chain lord now that we've cleaned up all of the Abaddon black. And we've coated everything that was chaos black with Abaddon black now. And all of the edges are nice and trimmed and clear and crisp. So moving on from there, what we're going to do is a little bit of an edge highlight. So we're going to do that with Thunderhawk Blue. So we get our fine detail brush. Just sort of go up the side like that. As well as the edges of all of the parts of the armor. So we're going to do all of these. Do the inside trim here, the gold. And we'll meet back here when all of that's done. So this is what our units look like after we've done the dry brush of Thunderhawk Blue. And as you can see, it's got a nice edge highlight on the edges of the wheels, on the front plate, 
on the back, on the edges, on the backpacks, on the the uh, helmet, and on the arms, and on the gloves. So that's all done. So now what we're going to do is add some different color. So we're going to take some Balthazar Gold and just start going over the details on the bolters. So like this little mouth here, uh, cartridge ejection slot. And there's one on both sides because for some reason in the 40k universe we eject cartridges out of both sides and nothing jams. We're also going to do the edges of the chain sword and then a few of the bolter cartridges coming out of here and we'll do all of those bits and then we'll meet back here when those are done. We're also going to take a little bit of that Retributor armor again And what we're gonna do is just trim the the pipes going up the, the stacks here for the horns um, And just clean up some of the face of the sorcerer here, so we'll do those two things and we'll meet right back again So now we're finished with our brass color as you can see on the guns and then we did the, the chain swords as well that one and the other one here and then we also took a few minutes to just do the trim on the Sorcerer's Helmet. I also threw a little tiny bit of uh, Stormhost Silver just right um, on this gem that's in the forehead. Because we're going to do that uh, with one of the technical paints. And you want a uh, silver underground for that to, to make it shot. So now that we're finished all of that, we're going to start on some of the detail work. So what we're going to do is the eyes, so two eyes here on the sorcerer as well as the two on the lord and there's a, uh, a, a braid hanging from the chain sword. So we're going to do all of those with the fist in red. So we'll take a little bit of that here with a nice watered down layer and it'll probably take two coats just because we're coloring over black. But we'll really, really get the color in there. And then with a fine detail brush, we will do the eyes as well. So we'll do all of those and we'll meet back here. So our Mephiston Red is finished. And as you can see, we did both eyes as well as the braid on the back of the sword. And we also did the Sorcerer's Eyes as well. Right in there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little bit of Spirit Stone Red and we're just going to do the gem on the forehead. So with our Spirit Stone Red, with our Spirit Stone Red we're just going to go over the silver that we did earlier. Just like so. Getting a nice rich red color right there. Now while we're at it, we're also going to take our technical paints and do a few of the buttons and gauges on the motorcycle controls. Which is these two here. As well as on the second bike. So we'll do those and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. Now that we finished doing our Spirit Stone Red, what we're going to do is take a little bit of Carsberg Crimson Shade and we're going to go over that braid again. Like so. Getting in all the details. And letting that sink in until it dries. So once that's dry, we'll meet back here. Still continuing with our uh, controls for the bike, what we're going to do is the large screen in the center of the console, which is right there, and we're going to do that with Soulstone Blue, which is another technical paint. So we'll do that on both bikes and meet back here in a moment. So we just finished with our Soulstone Blue, and as you can see the TV screens on the bike console looks really, really nice and shiny. 
We also took the time to do the staff and inserted a little bit of blue in all of the spaces there. And then same on the other side, just to add a little bit of a more of a gem look. And then we did the Soulstone blue on the control panel on this bike as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush on a highlight layer over where we um, shaded the braid. So for that we're going to use a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet, which is pretty bright. I'm just going to do a dry brush like that. Just to bring out some of that highlights. Add a little bit more texture there. Just so it stands out. So now what we're going to do is the Eye of Horus on the staff. So we're going to take a little bit of Jokero Orange. And with a fine brush. And a watered down layer. I'm just going to fill in that eye completely here. Just like that. So now that the orange is dry, we're going to take a little bit of Uriel Yellow and with the same fine detail brush, we're going to fill in, fill in the center of the eye. Something like that. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And now that our yellow has dry, we're going to take a little bit of Abaddon Black with our very, very, very fine brush. And we're going to put a pupil. Just like that there. And with that, our models are complete except for basing, so we're going to base them with some sand right now. And here you can see the finished units. As you can see, we've added some transfers to the shoulders, as well as based them with sand. And uh, they're pretty much done now. I hope you enjoyed uh, painting along with us. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, feel free to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe, because that's even better. And uh, leave a comment if you feel up to it. Um, I want to thank you for watching. And uh, feel free to tune in in the future when we do another painting video. We have a few interesting things up and coming. So thank you for watching. And you guys have a wonderful day.